Hello everyone, I'm John Eggins. This is PNG Tonight. Coming up, Nari says irrigation remains the best option to farm drought-resistant crops in PNG. The shift from the Office of Climate Change to a new authority and what that means and the transformation of the historic Maria House to the new nerve center of government. The National Agriculture Research Institute is one organization that emphasizes the importance of farming and the types of methodology used to produce good results. We talked to the Director General, Dr. Sergei Bang, about the irrigation system that can be adopted by all farmers. Dr. Bang, thank you very much for coming on to the program. Uh, thank you, Mr. Nagins. Okay. Pleasure. Food has been uh, an, a topic that's been talked about uh, of late. Uh, we've had the frost and the droughts and, uh, and of course the Minister for Agriculture's ban on certain imports. Um, NARI, a very important institution, uh, food generally. Talk about what NARI is doing, what we can produce, what we can't. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Niggins, um, in PNG most, uh, most food crops uh, can, be, can be grown and produced. Um, our agriculture system is mainly rain-fed, as I say. It's mostly rain-fed. Okay. Uh, so therefore, um, uh, since uh, April and June 2015, when we had a drought period, uh, then, of course, our farmers had difficulty producing okay. because under those uh, dry conditions, uh, production fell. Uh, so it's mainly, we're mainly rain-fed. And, uh, uh, and the point becomes more important now that we need to train our farmers, especially those who are in going into commercial agriculture, and even the subsistence farmers, that we need to introduce to them uh, irrigation systems, okay. simple irrigation systems, or, right. or, 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 or the more sprinkler types that can help in, in, in a large area yeah, of but farming. We've never been used to irrigation in our lives in the many years that we've done agriculture in this country. That's right. So uh, it's going to be difficult for you to convince people to do irrigation. Yes, we, and especially we should start, uh, as a, by way of starting, we should start with those who are, uh, become commercial. There are many who are retired public servants or uh, school leavers who have, have chosen agriculture okay. as a way okay. to, uh, as, to go into agricultural entrepreneurship and because they are making money. And the, the soil, clearly from the land, you can, you can, uh, you can make money. And, and so we need to demonstrate the, the cost benefit right. of putting in a irrigation system. It'll cost you money, but when you are farming along the Wagi River or along the Asoro River uh, in the Highlands, uh, uh, you, s you can easily put in a pump and uh, uh, pump water through a pipe and sprinkler system, okay. or, or you know, getting water from the mountainside through a tank and through drip irrigation. So uh, a cost-benefit analysis can be done easily too. Uh, it can be done. And in some places, I'm told that people are using water supplies uh, that are come through the village. And so this can then be extended to, for, for farming. Okay. So we, we need to go into this kind of uh, right. technology. Well, well, doctor, tell me this. What crops can we irrigate and grow? And where can we do it? Which areas are best suited for these kind of crops? Yes, uh, from the highlands, as you know, there are the temperate uh, type of crops. We, we've got cabbages and broccoli and, and, and carrots, uh, and uh, mainly out of uh, the Western Islands, but also Eastern Islands in Chimbu. Uh, so, uh, for those areas, uh, uh, the Western Islands the areas in, in, in Tambul and in the uh, Hagen and Valley and, uh, and Wagi Valley, where easily you can you can irrigate right. through pump. And uh, the Chimbu, I think. Uh, for the Gambok farmers and Gumani, you know, you can do irrigation also through uh, uh, gravity feed from okay. bring water from the mountain that side through sure, the gardens. Sure. Uh, the same can be said about the Eastern Islands. Uh, but on the lowlands, I think uh, in the Makam Valley and places, there's uh, water underground which can be pumped, yes. pumped up and um, up to a tank and then, uh, you know, through drip irrigation. This, this can be done. We, we know it's done in other yeah. countries. What about Barena and civic plains <coughs> and places yes. like that where yes. crops can grow? Yes, yes, clearly. Um, I think in Barena there are uh, several river systems close by or they can, you know, use bore water uh, to pump up to the to, to over our tanks and then to uh, drip irrigate to, to crops that they're growing. Uh, or the same in the civic plains. I mean, uh, these are places which have got high water table and, uh, you know, water can be pumped from another ground up or, yeah. or from a nearby river. Okay, you know. okay. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I mean, these places, okay, let's talk about 
farming on a large commercial scale. Yeah. Are our pa are Papua New Guinean farmers capable of that? Do we need some uh, overseas experts to come in and uh, help us? What, what needs to be done here? Yes. Uh, Mr. Nigas, uh, that's a very important uh, uh, point. Uh, I think that um, uh, our farmers are mostly subsistent as, and there are a few, uh, and increasingly this, uh, you know, we get commercial growers and they're going co commercial. Uh, however, we've got large areas of land uh, which, uh, which uh, we can benefit by having sort of broad acre, large agricultural uh, areas such as the Ramu mm -hmm. uh, uh, sugar, the oil palm uh, uh, plantations right. that we've seen. And, um, but <coughs> the Cedric Plains or the Ramu uh, or the uh, Makam Valley yes, and, uh, yes, yes. and uh, the Raina Plains, uh, these places can benefit if we uh, can get uh, um, uh, inputs of mechanization such you yeah. know and, and capital yeah. and uh, where they come with irrigation systems and uh, uh, we, we need, we to need go support. overseas for that no yes we, yes we, we don't we, have it here that's right we don't have it and it'll be useful if uh, we can uh, through our own government to government arrangements yes, uh, yes. We'll, we, we can engage uh, through aid uh, you know, farmers from Australia or New Zealand or, or any other parts yeah. of the world but okay, to come and work with our farmers on a joint venture project. That'll be good, yeah. To, and, but to, that to might be this. down the line. But in the immediate, yeah. um, we've got the crops in the New Guinea islands and coasters in the highlands as well. And there's concern about marketing, yeah. developing a system whereby they can have easy, easy access to market and cheaper. Correct. That's been a, a, a worrying area for all farmers. Yes, yes, this is a worrying uh, situation for all our farmers. Um, as you know from the highlands, uh, our farmers in the last 20 years have on their own moved volumes of produce uh, through to Lai and onto Port Moresby and, 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 and to Lai and then on to Rabaul or to uh, Manus and places. Uh, what, what, we need, what we need in this country is a national uh, food marketing uh, system with appropriate infrastructure and having in, in each of the highlands uh, provinces must have their own depots. Does, does the uh, government need to do that or do industries need to uh, do that? Uh, I think as in, as in many other countries, uh, government needs to put that infrastructure okay. in. Yes, yes, uh, yes. It could cost 20 million kina, uh, but we need to do it. The highlands, each, you know, Mount Hagen, Goroka, Kundia must have this uh, cooling uh, depots and packaging. Inlay must have a uh, big uh, uh, consolidation, deconsolidation but depot. We have some of those in mm. place already, haven't we? The depots in yes. certain provinces. But we do. But we need to do more uh, for the lowlands uh, areas. Like we need to have a uh, large uh, consolidation, deconsolidation depot in Lay with uh, power plugs for coolers, the containers to come through. We need a depot in Rabaul, Manus, but also along Oro Pobandeta or Alatau and onto Port Moresby. Uh, what we need to do is to promote the regional trade. Yes. means that uh, the Highlanders uh, bring produce through to LA and then in, in this uh, marketing infrastructure that there can be 20, 40 containers uh, in a month circulating the country and uh, bring Highlands pr produce down to the lowlands uh, to Mosby and to to uh, to Alata and Manus, uh, but as the containers return, they must take lowland fish and mangoes uh, and coconuts up okay. to the highlands. So it's yeah, trade within the country. It's trade within the, the country. country yeah. And yeah. when you have this effective cool chain, then yeah. we can have and then we can slowly get into irrigation. Okay. We can get more of our own produce available to the urban populations and the rural populations so that there'll be less need to to import. Okay. All right, Dr. Bang, can I just go quickly now on to Nari developing drought uh, weather resistant crops, particularly yes. for Tambul and for the highlands where they've had frost and, mm -hmm. and, and that. Are we able to do that? Yes. Uh, from, the, uh, from the 1997 drought, it was serious El Nino in this drought. Up to now, Nari has continued to uh, work research on, uh, on drought uh, tolerant crops, uh, drought uh, uh, irrigation systems. Uh, and, and processing. So we've we've had a, a strong program on uh, research on, on drought coping strategies. Okay. As you know, for this uh, PNG and the Western Pacific, um, uh, with the uh, with the climate change impacts, there are three main uh, problems occur. And this is the the, the drought. The, uh, on, a, on the El Nino, you get uh, very very little rain, so yeah. that's a drought. Yeah. Then soon after that, we get a La Nina when yeah. there's a lot of uh, rain, so yeah. it's excess moisture, and then. Uh, as, as you know, the sea level rises, the salt water comes up, so there are uh, gardening areas and people living on the islands and along the coast which have problems with uh, salt, more, uh, you know, in food gardens, so causing yes, yes, some damage yes, there. Yes. So now this research 
has been and will be into drought coping strategies and uh, and production systems under uh, too much rain, too much water, and then uh, coping with uh, salt in okay. case into food garden. So uh, this is the research that needs to continue into the next 10, 20 years uh, well, in helping our communities. Okay, to, uh, okay. To we are it. running out of time, uh, uh, Dr. Bang. I will get on to this now. Uh, the Minister of Agriculture, uh, Mr. Tommy Tomskoll, um, got into this arrangement where he announced ban on imports and then lifted certain areas. Are we able to cope with it? The, the, uh, is the local production able to meet demands here? I mean, that's an area that uh, it's pretty unclear. Yeah. Uh, firstly, I, I must say that the minister did the right thing to put a ban on. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we need to protect our own growers. Sure. Uh, our growers need a market. Uh, and as I've said, uh, under a, um, a normal growing season when rain yeah. is raining every other yeah. day, uh, you go to any market in the highlands, it's all full. Yeah. Uh, and then you tell growers to grow more of cabbage or broccoli, they'll yeah. tell you, we will not grow unless there's a market. Uh, sure, so sure. So when you put a ban on, you're creating a market. Right. So it's great for PNG and great for farmers. Uh, however, the ban came at the time when the drought came, and, and as, as we just said about irrigation, yeah. uh, farmers are not in irrigation. And so therefore, that's where the problem has been. Yeah. Uh, so we need to, firstly, that the, the ban is good. Now we need to look at this the, the areas we're lacking in, such as uh, <laughs> irrigation. Uh, uh, one more point is that I think it's important that there's a quota system that needs to come in with the, the ban so that we, we enable, we must get our supermarkets and our wholesalers to work with uh, growers, uh, work backwards to enable okay. a good value chain so that they need to buy lo what's locally available first and, and then good. earn a quota to import even under our ban system. Okay. So that means that... that uh, are these being communicated to the minister? Yes, the minister? yes. yes. Yeah. We are speaking with the uh, minister and the Department of uh, Agriculture under this... Uh, and uh, under the continuous quarter, discussions. Quarter arrangement. Yes. Mm. Uh, if you will remember, Mr. Nagin, uh, in, uh, in the early uh, mid-80s, we had a ban but, but we, we, we were successful in that band because we had a quarter system okay. which, which, which forced our major supermarkets and uh, institutions to buy what's available locally first, then to end a quarter to import, okay. uh, right. even, even South that was banned. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, that, that, that's the way to go, to, yes, to yes. help our industry grow as well, yes, uh, yes. as allowing for uh, import and, and satisfying uh, you know, co consumer demands. Yeah. All right. Well, Dr. Bang, I think we're running out of time here, but uh, food is an important uh, part of people's lives. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's where the stomach gets, it fills the stomach. It, if, you know, if you're hurt in the stomach, food, food solves it. So, and it's a very important uh, subject. I'm sure we'll have you back on the program yeah. again to talk more about this as yes. new developments take yeah. place there. Yeah. Well, the one, thank you very Mr. much for coming to us. Mr. Negans, I thank you very much for giving Ari this opportunity. Okay. Thank you, sir. Dr. Sergei Bang of Nari talking to us there. Stay with us, climate change, after the break. <laughs>